G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and welcome back to the Principles of Training. Late in 2017, I went to Australia for a couple of weeks to uh, work with a horseman named Luke Thomas. Uh, Luke's been a professional horseman all his life and one of the jobs he has these days is once a year he goes to a big thoroughbred farm there, big racehorse breeding facility, and he uh, halt, has a job to halt to break 150 thoroughbred weanling so they're still on their mothers and they basically have not been handled uh, i went i'd seen part so i'd seen some video of luke doing this and i was really interested in learning his process so i went there for a couple of weeks to actually work with luke and learn through the whole process while i was learning stuff with luke what i couldn't help but notice every time he showed me something i would in my mind I'd go oh that's that principle and that's that principle and we filmed quite a bit of it so i thought i'd show you guys it's the process that Luke goes through with these young horses, and I'm going to name each of the principles as he does them. So those mares and foals live out in a, what we'd call a paddock in Australia. They probably call it a pasture in America. And so the first problem you'd have is how to get them into a place where you can start handling them easy. And so this is where the principle of they need to know the answer before you ask the question and change one thing at a time happens. And so what the farm does before Luke even gets there is they go out and they start feeding these horses grain out of the back of what in Australia we'd call a ute. In uh, America they'd call it a pickup. And so they out in their, in their paddock they start feeding them grain every day. Then what they start doing is those horses start to realize when that when that, ute, that vehicle comes that they're going to get fed and after a while what they do is they drive the vehicle around and they drive it into the what we call yards, Americans we call them pens or corrals and put the food out in there. So those mares get used to coming into every morning, coming into those yards there to eat their food. So that's the change one thing at a time principle as in they don't try to lure them into the yards first. First they get them following the vehicle outside then they get to where they follow that vehicle in there and pretty soon you get there in the morning and they're waiting at the gate for you to open up the, the yards and let them in there. So the first thing Luke does is he catches one of the mares. The mares are all really quite well handled. They're all probably racehorses in their past so they've, they've been well handled quite a bit. He'll take them, the mare and foal into a yard there and then he works on the fact that young horses are curious. You know, young horses tend to be curious about things they haven't seen before, as long as it's non-threatening. So that's, they already know the answer to that. So he, do, he uses that, and then he also uses make the wrong thing hard and the right thing easy. And what he does is he tries to get their attention. He either, he'll maybe snap his fingers, slap his legs, something like that. And if, and that's the curiosity part. So they already know how to be curious about stuff. And as soon as they look at him, he will retreat around the other side of the mare. So that's the wrong thing hard and the right thing easy principle. Now he's not making the wrong thing hard, but he is making the right thing easy. As soon as they look at him, okay, I saw him do it time and time again. As soon as they look at him, he will immediately duck around the other side of the mother. So once he has that established, and by established, I mean it's good. So, you know, if he snaps his fingers or he moves, they tend to look at him right away. And that's the Donkey Kong principle. Donkey Kong principle is if, if the first thing's hard and you, you have struggled to do it, you go back and you do it again, do it again. You keep having to go over that thing until you get it good. And once he uh, gets them where he'll step back behind the mare, they tend to kind of half follow him around and be beside the mare. They'll come over on the other side of the mare. And then what he does is his first contact with his foal, this is really cool how he does this, his first contact with the foal is he puts his hand on the mare's chest or neck or whatever and runs his hand underneath so his hand is part of the mare and that foal instead of that something trying to approach him he's curious once again he's curious and he'll come over and those foals will touch his hand and that's how he gets that first touch and there's no stress involved in it because it's something the foal already does it's they need to know the answer before you ask the question the foal touches the mother with its nose all the time his hand just becomes a part of the mother so the next step that Luke does, once he's got them to where they can look at him quite easily and they've touched his hand, then what he'll do, he'll start leading the mare around in a circle with the foal on the inside. So whichever side the foal's on, he will start to circle that mare around there. And what tends to happen there is that foal will just lead in behind, in, in, into that mare's flank right there where they'd normally go when the, the foal's moving, in, when the mare's moving anyway. But the thing that Luke has done before this, this is the need to know the answer before you ask the question, 
he has made sure that foal is comfortable looking at him. That's its comfortable place. If you try to do that before you get them looking at you, a lot of times those foals will peel off because you're there leading the mare. So he's got them where he's com they're comfortable looking at you, and then he starts leading them in circles. And this is, they need to know the answer before you ask the question for the next thing he's going to do in probably the third session, not the second day, but the third day, what he's going to do is he's going to start leading those folds around with a halter on them, but they're, they're already going to lead in that spot anyway. So he's preparing them for that. But he also follows the Donkey Kong principle and that, that Donkey Kong principle, if things go wrong, you go back to the start. And if you look at this little clip right here, he's, he's walking around leading that mare. That foal is there on the inside in that mare's flank and he loses that foal's attention. So instead of just leading the mare and trying to do that, he takes a step back, goes back, clicks his fingers, gets that foal to look at him and then steps back around the other side of the mare. So that's the Donkey Kong principle going back to the start. For the mare. Get those eyes, get a good look. We'll back away. The next thing he does when he's leading that mare and foal around like that is he will cut a corner and he'll step between the mare and the foal and then work on getting that, that foal's eyes on him when he steps between them because later on you're gonna see there's gonna be a little move that he calls the dosy -si do when he's leading them around, that's gonna be very, very helpful to teach those foals to lead. And so right now he's doing the preparation work for that. You know, it's the need to know the answer before you ask the question or create a tool before you use a tool. He's doing that prep work for something that he's gonna do in about two or three days. Now if I get between him and mum, like that. And then he looks at me, I'll leave. See if I can get it to between him and mum again. There's a good look, so I'll just come back and hide back on this side of mum and as you'll work out, he'll start to learn to look at me more and more so that as I'm going to approach him, I can get his eyes to catch him. So it all starts with th at this stage. It's a good stage because they're pretty interested in you and they're not sh sure what's going on. There Luke's talking about in the future when he's gonna try to catch that foal out there away from its mother. He's actually, that's the need to know the answer before you ask the question. He's working on the steps leading up to that thing. So the actual catching the foal away from the mother will be quite easy. The next thing he does is he leads the mare over and backs her up into a little corner and uh, puts, gets the foal in that corner. And if you've ever handled many foals in a situation like that, they tend to want to hide, put their head back in behind the mother or under the mother like they're having a drink, but they tend to want to turn their hind end to you. But they already know the answer before we ask this question because they're very, very easy to get their attention on you. They don't try to hide from you. And so once he gets those foals to allow stand and face him like that beside the mother, then what he does, he starts taking one hand and he puts it out to the side beside that foal and tries to move it over towards the mother. So move it away from one hand towards the mother. Well, the foal already knows how to move away from things, you know, things that move. Um, and it already is inclined to want to go towards the mother. So he gets that fold to where it moves over towards the mother quite easily. So he's getting it used to that one hand on that outside of his head. And in this case, it's the horse's right eye. He's getting his hand, he's getting the fold used to being in his right eye. Then what he does, this is the, um, they need to know the answer before you ask the question. He starts to put his other hand up against the, the mare. And so he's trying to get that fold in between his two hands. This is the whole principle of change one thing at a time. He's already got the foal to where it will touch his hand when it's attached to the mare, except he used to be around the other side. Now he's changed one thing, he's around the same side as the foal. And what he's working at here is getting that foal to where it's really good with a hand on either side of its head because that's going to help him with the next step. So now that he's got the fold to where it's good with his hand on one side and his hand on the other side, and it's not terribly uncomfortable about that, he just starts to bring his hands in closer and closer to the fold. Now, if the fold gets a bit worried, he can always just back off a bit. That's the Donkey Kong principle and back off, go backwards. Um, he can back off a little bit until that fold relaxes and then he can come back in again. Right. back off him and give him a little respite from that. 
So that right there was the principle of making the wrong thing hard and the right thing easy. And just remember, the, the making the wrong thing hard and the right thing easy is about making the right thing easy. And right then, that little foal had a bit of a struggle with that. And when he got it right, Luke really backed off and made it easy. And I think that's something that a lot of people probably struggle with is figuring out when you can keep going and when you can't. And think about it, if your horse struggled figuring out the thing you're trying to do, he's not ready to go to the next step. Until you can do the thing that you're trying to do and it's not a struggle, he doesn't have to think about it, he knows the answer. They need to know the answer before you ask the question. Um, he knows the answer, then you can go to the next level. But if your horse is struggling trying to figure the, this thing you're currently doing out, you don't really want to add anything else. Sort of block the mare there. She's trying to push forward, so I'm just blocking her with my hip. So you can see right there, Luke was up to almost putting both hands on that fold. He, he, he's, he got the fold to where this bit was good. He was about to put both hands on the sides of that fold's face and it regressed. It went backwards and it stuck its head up over the mare's back. And that's really the principle of, you know, what he did right then is the principle of work with the horse you have today or really work with the horse you have right now and work with what's going on right in front of you. And even if you think you're up to a certain spot, if your horse regresses, you have to regress too. So Luke went the Donkey Kong principle, Luke went all the way back to the very beginning, snapped his fingers, got that foal's attention, and then retreated and make the right thing easy. And then so very soon after that, he gets his hands on both sides of that foal's head, and uh, as soon as he can get that foal to relax just a tiny little bit, he takes his hands off, and that's enough for one day. And that's the, the first day of that foal being introduced to humans. It's all a very step-by-step -step process, and Luke's very willing to do the Donkey Kong principle and step back and go back to the beginning if he has to. So that first morning I got to watch Luke work with a lot of those different folds and the process was pretty much the same with all of them. You know, first he wanted to get their attention, however long that took, then he would work on getting them to touch his hand, then he'd work on the leading around, and then he'd get them down in the corner. But he was also very adaptable too. He's very much stuck to the principle of work with the horse you have today, or work with the horse you have right now. And uh, there was one of them when he took the mare down in the corner, that foal didn't turn around and face him like it normally did. So he took the opportunity right there to teach that foal, to work on having that foal getting used to having its hind end touched. So he had a little bamboo cane. And so he was just stroking that foal on the hind end and down the legs. And if it wanted to stand there, that was great. Uh, but after a little while when he did that, that foal turned around and faced him, and so he just retreated back around the other side. And then it wasn't very long after with that one that he could just he went through the whole process, and pretty soon it could just cradle its head right there in his hands and kind of have a little relax. And then finish him relaxed like that, that's the don't go to bed angry principle. He made sure that when he finished every little interaction with those folds, that they were relaxed. He, you know, he wasn't going to finish up with them in a state of worry. He was going to wait for them to let down and relax. Luke was very good with the work your horse you have today principle, and he was very adaptable to what he did with those folds. And at one point in time, he had one, and he was up to the point of having it go down the corner. And he went to move it down to the corner, and it, it was kind of telling him that uh, it'd be a good idea to start working on that draw. Every time he put pressure on it to go in the corner, it looked at him. So instead of trying to get it into the corner, he worked on getting that foal to draw towards him. The mare will stay in the corner. Just see if we can... No, got to stick to that. And again. And right there we get a glance, you get it, that ear turns on you just a little, that's when you back away. He sort of hesitantly looked at me then, and again like that. And if you just get that glance, you now I'm, he's keeping me at bay from right over the other side of the yard. And if we can get his eyes to stick on us here, which is a big ask at this stage, but if I could keep him looking at me like that, 
eventually he'll, you know, he'll turn. So, we'll just see, he's pretty good to, pretty keen to look at me, so I might just get a few more of those. And there we go. That's a good lick and a chew, and he's turned around to face me and a couple of steps towards me. So that's the sort of confidence you can build in him doing this, or you could lasso him and bounce him off all the yards and crash him in and hang onto it and flip him over, or you can back away and every time they look at you and, and make them feel pretty good about themselves. So, and you know, when people do that, it's not because they're mean, horrible people. They just are doing the best that they can with the resources they've got at hand. Could almost get him to... And it was interesting what Luke said there. You know, all the, the, the best horsemen I've been around all have that same mindset as to where they're not judgmental of other people with what they're doing. Um, they're very aware that we've all been at a certain place at some point in time and some of us are further along than others, but there's no judgment to it. And, and it, you know, just like Luke said, everybody's working with the best of their, their knowledge that they have at that particular point in time. So after watching Luke work with a few of those foals, and it became my turn to uh, have a go at another watchful eye of the master, and it was, it was pretty interesting how easy it was, you know, just sticking to the principles, using the wrong thing hard, right thing easy, uh, especially making the right thing easy, but using that horse's natural curiosity to get him to look at you, then using the natural curiosity to get him to touch your hand, and then using their natural tendency to follow that mare in their flank and lead him around in circles and then it wasn't very long after that I had mine over in the mare and foal over in the corner and it didn't take very long after that and I had that foal's head cradled in my hands and he was completely relaxed there. So those were the only steps we went through that first day. Um, we did it with all of them and then the next day we came out and Luke would did the Donkey Kong principle and start at the very start. Got them looking at them, got them touching his hand, then he got them leading around, then he got them over in the corner, got to put his hands on their head. One and mum will take another step back and I call that my foal crush. My mare crush, we make a mare crush. So kind of like putting them in the little crush like that, but you've got the, using the mare as a wall. And the foal should happily stay there. Hey champ, how are you today? You good? Hey, do you remember us from yesterday? Do you? There you go. And I'll put my hand against the mare again, and there's first touch for the day. And the left hand, back to my right hand. He's pretty good from yesterday. You can tell this horse. So with those foals on day two, once we got through the process that we got through the first day, which is the Donkey Kong principle, we then slipped the halter on him. And putting that halter on him, you know, this is the second day of ever being handled. They've never been handled before. And putting the halter on them was very, very easy because we've already rubbed our hands all over that spot. It was the, you need to know the answer before you ask the question. And then once the halter was on, we just went back and went through the whole process we went through the day before with just while they're wearing that halter. So that's the change one thing at a time principle. We didn't put a halter on them and then try to lead him around with that halter on that they're not used to wearing. We just put the halter on him and went back and did all the same stuff we did the day before while they were wearing a halter. Once we'd worked through everything else with the foal wearing that halter and they seemed like they were, they were good with it, they weren't concerned about it, then we added a little move that I mentioned before that Luke calls the do -si do And uh, you know, we've had the, the mare leading around one way with the foal on the outside and leading around the other way with the foal, on, sorry, on the inside, and then leading around the other way. Then what we started to do was you'll have the foal on the inside while you're going around one way and instead of turning to the outside and catching them again, you'll turn back to the inside and go back between that mare and that foal and this, uh, this little move, it's actually leading up to some groundwork that we'll do with those foals later on when we're working with them online. I got to finish the session with that one by walking up to her and actually catching her not over in the corner, which is not something I had taught her to do yet. Well, I'd, it's not something I'd done yet. I taught her to do because it's the need to know the answer before you ask the question principle. But that foal's good at looking at me. I can go and put my hands on it when it was in the corner. And now I got to do it not in the corner. And so I thought that was a really good place just to pull the halter off and quit that session right there for the day, which is the don't go to bed angry principle. Just pull 
call that halter. Sweetheart. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the principles of training, working with those previously unhandled thoroughbred folds. Be sure to join us next time and we'll go through the process from here on out.